I think this is amazing when you could just get in the car, and I had no, we had no idea. What was going no, on. no, okay. We tried to now, obviously, because there's not a lot of things going on right now with the Buffalo Bills. Mm-hmm. We, uh, make sure you guys check out our uh, our podcast that we went, we uh, we did a throwback. Oh yeah, our podcast to the um, talking about New Era Field and the naming rights and all, a bunch of things intertwined in that. It's actually it's, it's a more interesting episode than we thought it's, it was. Gonna it's be. only like seven minutes. No, but yeah, it's, it's very. It, it asks a lot of really cool questions. You guys are going to want to think about. So yeah, absolutely, it, it's it's a really good episode. We don't say that very often that we it's a good episode, no. but that that's a very it there's, is a very good. Episode. There's a couple interesting questions that you guys would want to have answered in there. But that being said, we go. We were just talking about. Now, the type of players that the Bills draft, and this staff has tried to acquire over the last two or three years, we talked about Ed Oliver. Mm-hmm. We have talked about Cody Ford. We have talked about Josh Hamlin. Mm-hmm. But this all started when we wanted to talk about Tremaine yeah. Edmonds yeah, five, from the Sunday drive. Yeah, you know? five players ago. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it was a long, winding road, and I'm fa- and thank you guys for uh, for you know joining us in that. And if you haven't turned that red subscribe button gray yet, what are you waiting for? I don't even know. But we got to Tremaine Edmonds. We're starting to examine the players that were drafted around the players that the Bills drafted in the same position. Right. So and see and let's see what made those players so. So let's take a look at the picks around Edmund. You're gonna wear one. Will you at least wear the the hashtag official? Man? Will you model this for everybody? I can't wear it the way you wore. It. You wore the out of yours. It fits. It fits. There we go. If it ships, if it fits, it ships. That's right. Looks good. Can my ears look more like yours right now? <laughs> Don't run. You'll fly. <laughs> so Tremaine Edmonds. Um, so drafted 16th, right? So we're going to look at the player drafted ahead of him, same position, uh, just linebacking position, right? We're not looking outside, inside, just Because we didn't know where he was going to go. Right, yeah. Even exactly. though the Bills knew that where they were going to go. Right. So a uh, linebacker drafted ahead of him was eight. So right after Josh Allen was Roquan Smith for Chicago, right? Which we questioned because right. he didn't seem to fit in a 3-4 because he got a little sticky at Bama. Yeah. Was he at Bama? He was at Georgia. Georgia, okay. Yeah. Similar colors. I gotcha. Hell of an athlete, though. At the middle linebacker position. Right, but middle linebacker. Middle right? linebacker, not so, inside. Right, and a lot of times you see middle linebackers fall outside of the first round because that's the only thing they can do. Often they're a little bit slower, they're a little bit smaller, typically a little bit bulkier than yeah. your your um, you know weak side or strong side I mean, linebackers. long gone are the days of Mike Singletary. But. That's true, yeah, <laughs> yeah, very true. But no, you're right, you're right. I mean, it, it Singletary was a missile at the middle linebacker position. He had like 900 tackles in college. Yeah. Singletary. Almost as many souls as Frank Gore has taken with his helmet <laughs> over at NFL career. Roquan Smith, who I really did like, but I did have some concerns. Whenever you see a middle linebacker drafted that high, you're that's that is a that's a big stretch. It's a big stretch for Well the, the fact too is, and I'm gonna bring his name up again, and you're gonna roll your eyes at me. When he was drafted, Vic Fangio was still there. And he's not right. I, that wasn't even voluntary. That was totally involuntary. That reaction, I couldn't even. I'm sorry. It's so predictable. I love Vic Fangio. I know you do love Vic Fangio. All right. As so much we'll, as you love Jim Bob Cooter, <laughs> tell me there's a better name in sports. <laughs> I dare you. I challenge you. Tanya Harding. <laughs> Player drafted right after. No, I not right after. Not what, right what after. Number? 19th. 19th. So Edmonds Ooh. went 16th. 19th. Leighton Vander Esch to the Cowboys. I mean, who's been good? Who's been very who's been good. very good? Who's been very very good? And mostly an outside guy, though, isn't isn't he? Is he an outside guy? Mm-hmm. So the Bills jumped the Cowboys because who could have been that outside guy for the Cowboys? Tremaine Edmonds. Mm-hmm. Vander Esch is more of an outside guy that couldn't play on the inside, mm-hmm. and the upside of Edmonds being the age that he was. Mm-hmm. We can really develop him as a middle linebacker, and by the time he's 22, he'll be ready for his next contract. Crazy, isn't it? No, not 22, but... But, you know, it, it, now, mind you, he went at 19, right? The Bills had 21, but they dumped 21, right? That was the... They had gotten rid of 21 um, to Cincinnati. Yeah, they knew they had to get ahead of the Cowboys, right? Yeah. 
So the question is, right, would the Bills have taken Van Der Esch if he was still there at 21? Because that because there were yes. no other linebackers drafted after that. Uh, yes. Like Rashad Evans went at 22 to, to Tennessee. But again, another Buffalo pick, right? The Bills owned 22 at one point. So it was another Bills pick. Um, they could have. Rashad they Evans was at 22. Billy Price went at 21. <clears throat> and Frank Ragnow went at 20, both centers. So like you look mm-hmm. right after... Van Der Esch, Rashad Evans is the next one, but he's 22, and the Bills owned two picks between there. So you're talking about going up to get their guy. Now, I would say that between Evans, Van Der Esch, and Edmonds, Edmonds, t- to me, and this is not being a homer, I'm being objective, is the most athletic out of the three. Yeah, oh, yeah. They're he's no the biggest question. out of the three. No question. Um, so you got to think of it this way. If the Buffalo Bills did not trade up and then give – other assets away. They probably, I think really, here's the thing I think their mindset was. Listen, Allen and Edmonds, these are going to be the two studs Mm -hmm. of both the perspective sides of the ball. Mm -hmm. They're both young. They're both going to be playing, not technically out of position, but Allen going to an EP system. Edmonds going from outside to inside. Mm -hmm. They're athletic enough and hungry enough to learn what they need to learn. Right. That's one. Two, the Bills probably thought about it in the respect of, hey, if we don't get admins, if we don't get this trade up, we get Vander Esch. We still got Milano to put in the middle. Can you imagine Vander Esch on the outside and Milano in the middle of this defense? Well, I mean, the fact, hard the to fact remains that Milano wasn't drafted until two days later, but okay. <laughs> Not in that same draft. No, no, but you're talking about a fifth round pick being your middle linebacker. I know, but now your fifth round pick is your outside linebacker. Well, I think it's an interesting exercise drafting Edmonds because you're like, at worst case, he'll be one of the best weak side linebackers in the league. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on a second. I'm getting a flashback. You're telling me that... <laughs> that's your thing. You're telling you know me. How, you know how I say, oh, that's interesting? Or yes. That's, so you're telling me that's your thing. That's my thing. That's your thing. So you're telling me that a Carolina guy drafted a linebacker from Boston College and decided to put him in the middle? (laughs) Stop me if you heard this before. Luke, I am your father. (laughs) So the Carolina Panthers, when both of those horses were there, drafted Luke Keekley from Boston College and put him in the middle. First round pick, I know. But (laughs) within a fifth round pick, I understand it. But not unheard of to put a BC linebacker in the middle of a defense that's led by Sean McDermott. That's my point. That's one. Two is this. Rashawn Evans would have been a nice one. Yeah. He could have played the middle of this defense. He could have. But but not the guy they wanted. Well, but I think here's the difference, right? You look at you look at a player like Edmonds, right? And you say, listen, we'll draft Edmonds, we'll try it in the middle. If it doesn't work, he'll still be a very almost elite level weak side linebacker. Yes. Even at face value. Right mm-hmm. at face value, he's at least going to be able to play weak side. But I think they were stubborn enough to say that work. <laughs> but that's the thing, right? You look at a player. You look at Rashad Evans, right? Can only play middle. You're only asking him to play middle. You're not asking him to play outside. He's no. playing in the middle, mm-hmm. right? Van Der Esch is kind of the 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 fringe guy to me, right? Van Der Esch and Edmonds are similar in that asking Van Der Esch to play out of play. Asking Van Der Esch to play the middle is the same thing as asking Edmonds to play the middle, right? Not to a different degree, though. What do you mean? Because I think Edmonds was more versatile coming out. Well, okay. I think Van Der Esch Edmund has more like, talent than Edmonds outside, but Edmonds has more talent than Van Der Esch inside. Okay. Uh, that's debatable. Okay. That's yeah. debatable. Um, who is the better athlete? Edmonds. Edmonds right. Yeah. And as we've discussed, the, the athlete wins here, right? The athlete wins. And I, we're not talking about Edmonds coming from a great college either. No offense. Tech. No attack. No offense to Virginia Tech. Tech. I know you own a Virginia Tech jersey. I do. You own a Marcus Vick Virginia Tech jersey. It was five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Roquan Smith and Rashad Evans both went to three, four teams. Yeah. So did Van Der Esch. Yeah. Edmonds, the freak athlete, goes to a four, three. And the weird thing is that I would put Edmonds more as a. You would want just an animal like that. Think of how versatile your three four would be with a, That's with why a player he like was Edmund. number one. That's why he was they traded up to get him. Mm-hmm. Because though I mean, and truthfully speaking, maybe Evans and, and Smith were 
are better inside linebackers than middle linebackers, which is probably what the Buffalo Bills saw. And you don't want to put Tremaine Edmonds on the inside of a 3-4 because we saw how sticky he got his rookie year. Yep. Unfortunately. I agree with that. I, agree with that. I mean, he didn't get as sticky, sticky as Kiko. Kiko. The doormat of the AFC. Yeah, Kiko was so sticky that running backs were walking over him like they had gotten gum on their shoe in the parking lot. <laughs> like, what was that? Oh, it's some dude with a half shirt. I just stepped on a Ken doll. <laughs> With Edmonds, right? I did not project him to play the middle. No, I, I was really worried about Edmonds because his eyes was always a thing that got me. He get he get sucked up in play action, right? Mm-hmm. Well, no, in, in his rookie year, yeah, but like he would get sucked up in misdirections at Tech. Like there were things that he just didn't have great vision if he wasn't in a blitz package, right? Okay. So the things that I really liked about Edmonds, I just didn't see. Yes. As far as the strength of the middle linebacker, the Bills clearly thought differently, and they've developed him into a solid middle linebacker. Yeah, that we've seen so far. Right, but did the Bills take Edmonds because he wasn't a middle linebacker? And they said, "Listen, we're going to try and transition him to middle. If it doesn't work, it's not like it's not going to work. Like who is the linebacker the Bills drafted? That the that Bama middle linebacker that the Bills drafted? In Reggie some, Ragland. Reggie Ragland. You cannot ask Ragland to play outside." No. Right? He's going to play in the middle. That's it. He's a middle linebacker. Right? Yep. You draft uh, Rashawn Evans. He's yeah. a middle linebacker. Right? Yep. So you are you are putting your – it's like drafting a center. You're not drafting a center to put him at guard. Eric Wood was a, Eric Wood was different. Right? <laughs> Eric. Wood they put him at guard on accident. They sure did. Well, I mean, how are you not going to start Jeff Hangardner? I mean, how are you just not going to start Jeff Hangardner? I don't know who you're talking about. <laughs> I erase names from my memory. <laughs> Cause me severe pain. That is getting near the uh, irrelevant time period for me. Yes. Anything over 20 years, you're getting really close to that. But did they take Edmonds because he wasn't a middle linebacker? And they said, we think he's got the skill set to transition. If he doesn't, he's still a, he's still a freak athlete. Well, let me ask you this. You, you asked the question last episode for Allen. Mm-hmm. Was he the, is he the hybrid of Jackson and Darnold? So is he the a is, hybrid of Van Der Esch and Smith? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are we talking about? I here? know, but it's true, right? Wow. So, it, it, but wow, and we, and we talked about it. the Bills don't want the first player off the board, right? Because oftentimes that first player, again, you're talking about major colleges that these guys are coming from, and typically hard to really judge. I mean, Roquan Smith at Georgia, I think, is a little bit different. Um, I think I think Georgia and Virginia Tech are probably of similar recruiting status, right? You look at the talent level no, on the no, roster. No, no, Tech, Tech's – well, on. Georgia's SEC. Yeah. Tech is ACC. Right. Tech does not get the horses that um, that Georgia gets. So are you saying that you think Edmonds' production was more on him. impressive? Yes. Because he played in the ACC. I, I do, 100%. And he's playing against top-level competition in Clemson and all of the yeah. – what? Yeah. No, keep talking. What did I miss a meeting? Like no. to, what? Are you getting mad because I'm hyping up the SEC? I'm just saying that the ACC and the SEC. I mean, we're not talking about the Mountain West here, right? It's not that big a division between the ACC and the SEC. Listen, we have these discussions quite a bit in the car, Paul. We have been sitting in a car for 15 minutes in a driveway with our belts still on. <laughs> Clearly, there's a miscommunication somewhere. <laughs> I think this has been an interesting walk through the way that the Bills approach their, their draft. Because now I want to do this for the rest of the rounds. You know, like you, you, you see the Bills draft somebody, you're like, oh man, I didn't really think that that would be a target. I really thought that this guy that got taken before was who they were going after. I'm like, no. Live? Like, what? Live? Do a live video next week after all these are out. That wouldn't be bad. We could. We have time to look it up. Next Friday, we can do it next Friday. I think there's a lot to unpack here because maybe this theory works in the beginning rounds, but maybe in the later rounds it doesn't. You're just taking BPA. Maybe. First is first and second round, and then we always said five, six, and seven are flyers. There's mm-hmm. something intriguing about the player that you like. Mm-hmm. Can we work with them? Can he develop into a player? Can he do this, that, and the other? All right. All right. And if they show out, they show out.
Trivia question for you. Teron Johnson went to Weber State. Name the conference. Weber State? <laughs> um, I didn't even know this was a conference. That's how much I pay attention to college conferences. I only have so much room in my brain for stuff. Weber. Oh, uh, it's um, Mid-Atlantic Coastal Conference. Big Sky Conference. Oh, the Big Sky. Oh. <laughs> I know the Big Sky. It's in Montana. Montana's serious? in the Big Sky. You know this? Click stuff? on Big Sky. Montana's in the Big Sky Conference. Shit, Montana, there we go. <laughs> All right. Montana, Cal. What else, who else is in there? Utah, <laughs> Oregon. <laughs> you know, all the big ones. <laughs> all the square states. <laughs> Again, I, I don't want it to sound like this theory applies across the board, but when you're talking about those, those you have to hit these plays, like these players. When you're drafting first and second round, you cannot miss. You can't miss. No, and the so, Bills so far doesn't seem like they have. Right. That's why we can't do 2020 yet because we simply just don't know. But maybe if we go and we look and say, look at Epineza, does he fit the model of a player that would, that, you know, the player before, player after, does he fit the model of what we've seen in, in 2018? Well, I think we're taking this in the, in the middle of a vacuum because the Bills needed a corner because they lost Gilmore. Because that's when they got Trey White. They needed a defensive tackle because they were losing one. They got Ed Oliver. They needed a quarterback and a middle linebacker. They got Allen and Edmonds. You know what yeah, I mean? but the theory still applies because Trey was the fourth corner taken off that. Taken, he was, taken and they, they traded board. back. They did. Because they knew the next year, the quarterback class that was coming out. I really think they had four horses to choose from. They were just starting out. Bean was coming in. McDermott was going to trust Bean's decision to pick a quarterback because he wasn't going to pick offensive guys. And he was not going to let Bean. He was not going to let Whaley pick a quarterback. No, he was not. So he said, listen, we're going to, um, for the GM that's going to be here eventually, I could pick guys. Let's trade back with, we'll get an extra first rounder for next year and give ourselves some ammo. I know corners. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pick the corner. But then Milano got picked in the fifth round of that draft. That was That had to be a Whaley guy. That had to yeah. be a Whaley guy. He knew linebackers. Which he knew linebackers. Which is another reason why he may not make it to a second deal. Because he may guy. he may not be. He may I not think be. I think he's earned his way into McDermott. I'm just saying, if we're talking about previous regimes and then new regimes and what happened with guys, I think he the may market. A, I think the market for for Milano is thinner than people think because there's going to be no money to pay people, right? There's going to be no money to pay them. Milano demand. Milano is going to be lucky to make six mil a year. What? Yeah, make at least ten. No way. They also changed the rules in the CBA. You can only use the you can only use one tag, so you can't transition tag and franchise tag. You got it. You get one you tag. Decision, yeah. You get one tag. That's I transition them. I, there's nobody I would franchise tag. There's nobody. Because yeah, the can. next year you're going to need it for. Yeah, but if you transition tag him, you're still f yourself because you're promising them. Well, a top twenty five deal isn't isn't that bad, I guess. Right. I guess you, the transition tag makes think the most about sense. The, you think about the market of outside linebackers right now. Undersized outside linebackers? Okay. He's an undersized outside linebacker, dude. Like, he's undersized. He is. He'd fit in Jacksonville. He'd fit in uh, him, San Francisco. Put him in Chicago next to Roquan Smith. <laughs> and then have them sign Telvin Smith. You, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, sure. I and mean, we're surprised that Roquan Smith is so good, yet everybody's running away from Cleo Mack. Like, oh, look at how good Roquan Smith is. <laughs> yeah, of course he's good. Nobody's running the left side of the field. It's easy for him. It's like it's like when you're on a it's, you're on a tee and there's woods on the left. You're like, well, I'm gonna hit it right. <laughs> shade that. Let me shade this part of the you're course. Still right it. <laughs> you're still gonna hook it every now and again.